What's going on, YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at it today. Listen, let me take these hot ass gloves off. I just had to give y'all a little blood on my hands. Blood on my hands. Can you see the blood? Y'all, it's been a whole year since I was here to talk about American Horror Story, right? So we on a brand new journey, and they took it back to 1984, bitch. And I'm excited. I must say, I can appreciate this new theme of every, hold on, it's a little hot in here. Give me one minute. Y'all, American Horror Story tonight already with a banger. I don't give a damn what y'all say because some of y'all was like really complaining about last season. I don't tell y'all talking about the witches came back, all of that. But I dead ass got a whole vibe of Friday the 13th with a little bit of Michael Myers, with a little bit of um, I Know What You Did Last Summer and something else. I can't put my foot quite on it, but Anyway, let's get into it. American Horror Story, Season 9, 1984, Episode 1, Camp Redwood. So, they take it back to 1970, right? And uh, they got this spooky cab logging going on right away. And uh, what you saw in the, like, the little teaser trailer when the girl was like, if it feels good, go with it or whatever. I'm like, why are we doing all that? But okay. And so these two girls, they, they smooching and kissing and all that, you know, doing their thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, they show the little woods and the lake and everything foggy and stuff on the other side. And, uh, you know, the, the blind girl, she ain't really feeling it. She's like, what the hell is all that noise? Then all of a sudden this dude pops out of the covers and stuff. I'm like, oh, it's a three-way type of situation. All right, cool. Um, so... They got everything going on. He got his lambskin rubbers on and there, well, in his hand for now. Um, and they about to do what they do. And once again, the girl, she ain't really feeling what's going on. She feels a presence. And lo and behold, there is one. I hear all these damn jingling ass keys and whatnot. And pay attention to that jingle word later on when we talk about this episode. So, like, you know, she was like, you know, do y'all hear something? You know, I something don't feel right. And they were like, no, nah, don't worry about that. They still kissing and making it. I'm like, all right, just go ahead and do what y'all do. All right, damn. Y'all just wasting all this motherfucking ass time. And so the girl, she watching the dude and the, the brunette girl, they just started kissing and making out. They get to the other side of the bed and uh, they take their stuff off and they looking at her and everything. And you can see their little silhouettes, you know, in the little covers and stuff so nobody see what the hell they doing, right? And uh, the girl, as she's taking off, I love this shot right here. As she's taking off her shirt to show nothing but her bra and skin. That's when the little couple, they get diced and sliced in the head, Jason Voorhees style. Two for one special in this bitch. Like, he literally just put shit both of their head, and all of a sudden, they fall the fuck out. And she, like, and she gave herself up low key. Well, I mean, maybe she would have died anyway. I don't know. She, like, fell backwards and shit. And then she, like, scooting away. And Mr. Man, he coming towards her. And she's backing the fuck away all slow and shit. Like, that's going to really help. And she trying to reach for the little door and shit. Like, she going to get out. And he stabbed her right in the damn pupil. Right in the damn eyeball. Can y'all... I need to drink some water on that. So then, as we see, I think he dragged her body away or some shit. And lays it right there on the little pavement. And he chops an ear off. I'm like... So this was like a darker, more brutal version of Michael Myers and white version of Michael Myers, Michael Myers, Mike Tyson before his time, I would think. So he takes the girl back and puts her along with the rest of the bodies. Well, the two bodies, I thought that was it. No, we go to the lineup of all the rest of the campers and shit that he done murked in this little bitty cabin. I'm like, well, damn. And so it's just blood paths and lines all on the damn floor. I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know what I'm saying? And um, them keys is just a jangle langling. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a mess. So we move on to the next scene. Before that, let me get into this. Like when they showed all the bodies and shit, I low key like got chills and got lit as hell because like the music that they had. Y'all can't tell me that shit didn't sound like some Halloween type of shit, like Michael Myers, you know, like the doom, 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 doom. If y'all watch Halloween, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, that shit sound like the Michael Myers music. Then it's like when it's doom, 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 doom. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then we get to the dope-ass 80s uh, opening credit intro thing. 
Now, uh, if you watch my channel, you obviously seen me react to the opening credits, little intro, and I'm like so here for it because it sounds, it still sounds like the American Horror Story, you know, theme song or whatever, but they switched it into an 80s type of sound, and I'm so here for it. Like, I just love the whole thing. It literally looked like I was watching some 80s horror movie or some 80s horror TV show. I'm so here for it, and I'm here for this season, but we're going to get into that later on. Let's get into the rest of the episode. So we get up into this little dance class, and as we see your boy Michael Langdon, but you know, this is a whole nother version. This is not Michael Langdon no more. This is Xavier Child, and he up here teaching his little 80s taboo dance. They go ahead, and all I can think about is that scene from the Parkers. going crazy right so this is how we meet all the little characters we meet all the little 80s friday the 13th crew but you know just a different verse we're going to camp redwood but little do y'all know camp crystal lake is right up the alley like right not not too far from camp redwood they real close so beware so michael langdon well and here he is xavier then we get montana then we get brooke and then we get uh what's his name chet and then the black dude is ray i who else? Did we get anybody else? Nope, moving on. So as they're doing this little, you know, exercise thing, you know, they're doing all their little thrusting and pumping and all that type of stuff. And Brooke is obviously checking Chet out. You know what I'm saying? She like what she see. He's a nice looking dude, nice body, all of that. And, uh, you know, she's checking him out as he's thrusting on the floor and she don't know what to do with herself. And Montana look, sees that shit, right? And uh, after they finish their little exercise, little routine, they get to the showers, and Brooke and Montana, they had their little friendly encounter and everything. She's like, girl, I can hook you up with him. I saw you checking him out. She's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And they were just introducing themselves. So we got Brooke and Mount Montana, and then we transfer over to the scene where everybody chilling. You know, you got Xavier, you got Ray, and you got Chet. They all just talking. A telephone call. Telephone call from me, Madre. You know what I'm saying? But as I was saying, we got Xavier, we got Ray, we got Chet. Uh, they all talking and whatnot, and Montana and Brooke come on in. And what Xavier is talking about is the murder that happened over there at Redwood, you know, with the crazy man, right? And so apparently they called him the Night Stalker. And also in L.A., which is where they're at, uh, it's been like some murderers and stuff going on. And I think that's who they was referring to at first. But I did think they was talking about the camp, the whole camp situation. But so Brooke, she gets introduced to the new crew and all of that. She's still checking Chet out and everything. And, uh... Basically, they get to the conversation of Xavier being this actor, and, you know, he's a serious actor, right? And so, he got booked to work as a counselor or whatever at Camp Redwood. And, you know, they was like, he was asking everybody, yo, y'all in? So, everybody was pretty much boom, boom. They like, I'm in. Let's go. And Brooke, she wasn't really down. She was talking about she got to study for medical school or something like that. You know, med school. Shout out to the game. Um, and my team was like, you know, if you change your mind. Let me know. She put it. She wrote her number down on a little hand and all that. Some tell me them two, they gonna have a little thing going on, but we'll see. So anyway, Brooke, she arrives home in her little bitty red old car. You know, she unlocks the gate and all that. She unwinds herself to go to bed. You know, she opened her little jewelry box. You know, she's looking at all these little rings and trinkets and all that and accessories and all that. She got up in her little yellow jewelry box and she goes on to bed. And all of a sudden, she looks up because she was laying like this and she looks the hell up. And this dude pretty much the night stalker is on her like yo where the jury at and he goes she goes to show him and he was like is that it night she said pretty much and you know apparently that's not enough for him and he started he started rummaging through her other stuff and it's like you bastard you motherfucking bastard and so she he was like you gonna be famous tonight bitch uh you gonna be bleeding everywhere and so she was like hell the fuck no she takes a damn pant and <laughs> Wax his ass the fuck up on out of here. He's like, you fucking bitch. And so the neighbor's like, yo, the police is on the way. Just hold on. You all right now? Are you all right now? And he was like, I'm going to find you. He said, I'm going to find you again. Satan, he going to show me the way. I was like, oh, Lord, so we got a Satanist on our hands. Did you jump back from motherfucking apocalypse, all right, from last season and jump back to 1984? Jump back to 1984? Come on, man. Come on. And we transferred to the scene. She up in the van with the rest of the crew, and she was like, yo. That was crazy hell. She don't even know how the hell I'm alive. And uh, what's her name? Montana. She said, you're a badass. She was like, no the hell I'm not. So she's drinking her little flask and all that. And uh, Ray and Chet and them, they over there drinking booger sugar. Well, not drinking it, but sniffing it, if you know what I mean. That little 
that little flour powder. You know what I'm saying? Not the flour that you would put on chicken or whatever else you use flour with. But um, you know how these damn kids do. So basically, they're just getting all excited about the whole trip and everything. And, uh, you know, Chet, of course, he's showing off his body and everything. They're talking about the whole sports Olympics thing that they do. And, uh, you know, of course, like I say, Brooke is checking him out again. And uh, eventually they had to go stop and pull over for gas. So, Xavier, he goes over to the phone to make a phone call. So, this one creepy ass dude, he on the phone, he's like, you can't run, you can't hide. I know where the fuck you're going. And I'm like, so is he? Is Xavier, is Xavier on the run or something? Like, what's, what's that about? We don't know. Anyway, they're talking about the camp. And uh, the little pair, repair man, auto shop car man, his name is Ed, by the way. Um, he overhears them talking about Redwood. He was like, y'all said Redwood? They were like, yeah, why? He was like, mm-mm, 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 go back to the city. And they were like, nah, man, don't worry about it. We got it. We cool. We got this. We ain't worried about no little myths, no little ghost stories, none of that. He was like, okay, if you go over there, just know you're fucking dead. So they, they get back on the road. They're driving, and they got this big-ass map. They're looking for directions on how to get to where the hell they're going. And before you know it, poop. They run over somebody. They run over a hiker or somebody. Somebody stranded out on the road. And they were like, oh, shit, did we just hit him? No, he just jumped into the middle of the road. Yeah, you hit him, you motherfucker. So obviously, they get out, and they, you know, they get him out the road. And they was like, well, Xavier was like, look, we did not hit him. We're going to make a pack. Some, oh, I know what you did last summer type of shit. We take this to our grave type of shit. We didn't hit him. If anybody asked, we didn't hit him. He just was in the road, and you know what I'm saying? He was already there because he had had, like, some cuts or some bruises or something already on him. And he grabbed a guy from, from the road. He grabs uh, Brooke's arm. He was like, you know, you got to believe me. I tried. I tried. Something like that he was saying. That was weird. So I guess she might have looked familiar to him or something like that. But anyway, because I, I thought, when I thought about it just now, was that the same dude from earlier? Did he not die or am I tripping? Like, he kind of looked like him. I don't know. Something going on. We'll figure it out. So, they put him on up in the damn van because they can't just leave him out there, of course. Because I thought he was going to die because he had closed his eyes and he didn't answer. So, they put him in the van. They finally arrive and here comes Margaret. Now, Margaret, she's a saint. She's holier than thou. She's trying to get closer to God, which is nothing wrong with that. He was basically welcoming them, giving them a little intro into Camp Redwood. And, uh, you know, they introduce him, well, Margaret, to uh, the guy that they hit on the road, but of course she don't know that. She was like, so what the hell happened? And he was like, we just found him on the road. You know, Xavier old slick ass, cause like he said, we're not saying we hit him at all. We just found the motherfucker on the road. So they go give him over there to Nurse Rita, all right? So Nurse Rita, she gonna take care of him, hook him on up, and uh, you know, they all up in the room, and she was like, look, I'm one of the best nurses out there, pretty much what she was saying. Don't worry, don't trip, he all right, he good. So, um, Margaret, she takes them on out the nurse room and she introduces them around the lake and the camp and the forest and the trees and all of that, right? So as I was saying, Margaret, she shows them around the camp, the lake, re the trees, forest, all that. And, uh, she was basically saying, she went on to say one of the, uh, like the top deaths from the kids was drowning. And they was like, what's the other one? You know? And she didn't say nothing. So we get introduced to the chef. Chef Birdie, Chef Gertie, Chef Dirty, something like that. And uh, uh, what's his name? Xavier was trying to talk about some dibs or something. And she was like, you don't know what you would do with it, handsome. He was all shocked and distraught by her deep ass voice and everything. But I mean, hey, um, Margaret went on to talk about how, you know, Chef Birdie, you know, she's one of the good people around here. And she's been around here for a long, long time. And uh, Chef Birdie was like, you know, she got a lot of good memories despite what happened that one night with Mr. Um, Jingles, because that's the man's name, actually, the, the killer, you know, because he got a thing for jingling, jangling ass keys, you know, noisy ass keys, them irritating ass keys. And uh, Margaret, she eventually shows them to their cabins, you know, obviously when the whole color thing comes in, in part, you know, as far as boys and girls, girls is uh, blue, well, girls is red, boys is blue, right? And Chet was like, you don't expect us to, you know, not be. And, you know, like I said, Margaret, she's one of them holier-than-thou people. So she was like, you know, well, y'all do what y'all want. If you want to have the flesh in your soul or the soul in your flesh or something like that, she was going by, go right ahead. But she was like, y'all going to follow these rules in the name of Jesus. I'm not trying to be funny, but that's how she was. So eventually they all gather by the campfire and sing the campfire song. They all sing, sitting by the campfire, you know, just chilling, smoking a piece of wood or something. And uh, they eventually get to talking about the night, right? 
and uh, Brooke, she had mentioned the Nike stalker and uh, how he broke into her house. And, you know, Montana was like, look, girl, chill. He don't know where you at. You good over here, right? And Rita, she gets to mention it, which is the nurse. She gets to mentioning uh, about the whole thing that happened over here at Redwood. And Xavier, he don't really believe what happened exactly. He was like, look, Brooke actually went through something that's real, not some ghost story. And Rita was like, oh, hell no, this is real. Let me break it down. So Rita, she went on to talk about at the campfire, nothing, nothing better than a damn creepy ass story about what happened. And she was basically explaining, this is the murder site of what the fuck happened. And so before they called him Mr. Jangles or Mr. Jingles, it, his name was, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Um, Benjamin uh, Richter or Rector, whatever the fuck his name is, but they eventually called him Mr. Jingles. Um, he was in the Vietnam War. His kill rank was high as hell. Higher than somebody having a risk of a heart attack or falling off of a tall, long story ass building, something like that. And, uh, you know, even after he was injured and stuff, he still went out for more. And uh, she basically went on to say he was really good at killing and like it was just something he just had to do. He went, he was just really good at it. That's all the fuck he did. He did like it was a sport or it was a job or something, right? She went on to say how she, well, he, Mr. Jangles, took um, trophies from his bodies and shit, right? So those trophies would be damn earpieces, right? Remember I said that at the beginning of the damn episode. That's what happened at the beginning of the episode. He took the motherfucker ear off. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is Mike Tyson type of shit. What the fuck is going on before his time? So after all that, he got discharged, of course, from the Vietnam or from the Army or whatever they say he was at. And uh, the only job he got offered to do was to work at Camp, uh, Camp Wood. Redwood. Camp Redwood, that is. So, with that being said, <coughs> that spirit of him being this crazy stone cold killer came back to him and he just snapped one the fuck day and that was that damn night where he killed all 10 of them motherfuckers in that camp. So here come Margaret ass and she basically says, if you're going to tell the story, tell it right. He didn't kill 10 people, he killed 9. Because there's one that survived. Brooke was like, he's real? And so Margaret feels the need to hold up her ear, well, hold up her hair, and shows that one of her ears is missing. What, what ear did she show? I don't know if it was her left ear or her right. All I know is it was completely gone with just this little hole of skin. And it was like, what the fuck is that? And uh, basically, she went on to tell the story. <clears throat> and so basically, that we went right back to that night in 1970 where everybody was bodied and bloodied all up. And she went on to say that she saw a light. She saw Jesus. She saw the Lord. And the Lord took her and kept her that night so she was looking up at the lamplight when everybody else was just you know dead as a motherfucker and all this blood was in her eye and shit and she was looking up at that light right and she heard his jingle jangling ass keys and here he come again and so she said god just kept her there so as this man walks right up to her she's playing dead pretty much that's the best the way she got up out of there by the grace of god and by the grace of her playing dead like a motherfucker like she was acting because she was but you know what i'm saying you get what i mean um, he cut her damn ear off. She didn't flinch. She didn't scream. Girl, you did it better than me. I don't know what I would do in that situation. Like, the best thing you could do is to play the fuck dead. And when he's not looking, run like hell, I would, I would guess. So you don't have to worry about him cutting off your ear if you playing dead, but you not dead. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, basically, she made it up out of that night. And, however, she was saying... She was one of the witnesses in his trial because, you know, they eventually took him to court, you know, took his ass to court because they knew his ass was guilty any damn way. But she said it still kind of haunts her or whatever. You know, she can't escape what happened, obviously. So she is the one who reopened the camp. And she was saying she wanted to pretty much make it a better tomorrow for the new kids that come down to this camp, which is why they are here as counselors. So we switch over to the guy that was on the road who uh, was laying down. He wakes up from his long little nap. And, uh... He went, he went, he go over to the mirror. He goes over to the mirror and he lifts up his hair and he sees that his ear is gone. So obviously he was another one of the damn victims. So with that being said, Brooke, she heads on back to where, uh, one of the cabins is and, um, and the guy, he kind of like sneaks up on her and she got a little scared. And so, you know, she being his little nurse or whatever, and she assists him to go back to the bed. And now they weren't talking about a bunch of nothing, but he was like, get out. It's not safe here. Get out. Get out. Get out. And she was like started or whatever. So she goes back to the cabin where all the crew is. And she was basically letting them know like she don't know what's wrong. She don't know what's wrong with him. She, uh, she think he might need help or something like that. And they was like, you know, not here for it either. And so all of a sudden. Before that, um, 
he did say something bad. He feel like something bad is going to happen. So that's the warning right there. Because, you know, mind you, what happened to him later on in the episode, we're going to get to that later on. But anyway, this big dude comes up in here. Name is Trevor, right? He got his little orange, well, yellow 80s booty shorts on and everything. The girls is checking him out. Well, mainly Montana ass. And so she, he basically goes home and say, I use in a couple of commercials. And, uh... Basically, how one of the commercials, you know, he got apparently he got viral before viral was even a word back then. I would think because of his uh emoji eggplant. We're gonna keep it safe as far as that word is concerned. <laughs> and I felt like Montana, you know, the way she was checking, talking about that thing was flopping around like a like a jelly bean basket, a bag, or whatever the hell she said. I say, yeah, Montana, she's gonna fuck him. She's gonna fuck him. She's going to fuck him. And so as they talking it up with uh, Trevor, you could tell they're being watched. You know how they had those cameras like in the back and look like somebody watching them. And then before you know it, we get back to another, we, well, we get into another scene and uh, Trevor, he's walking to the lake and he's going to get all comfortable. And there's Montana in the lake waiting for Trevor to come up in there and, you know, do some stuff. So basically they talking about what well, she was saying, how, you know, one of his videos, she couldn't stop watching it. She get all excited just thinking about it. And he get all close to her. And he was like, let me show you a thing or two. And all of a sudden he go down in the water and uh, swim in her waters for a minute. But anyway, she happens to look over and there is a car. There's some lights on. She was like, what the hell? We need to go back in the house. And he's basically saying the same thing. So this woman, she's driving through. I think, I think it was raining all that day. The police opened up the gates and stuff. There's this one guy. Something was wrong with him. Clearly, he was like, ah, you know, make all these noises. And the other police guys, they come and get him. And she drives on through. And this one one crazy woman, she stops in front of a car. And she's like, ah, you know, like a zombie or something almost. But, you know, zombies don't really scream. They just like, Rah. you know how, if you watch The Walking Dead, you should know that. Um, or play it in the zombie killing game. But anyway, so apparently it looked like she went on to an asylum or something like that. And uh, she wanted to know, like, what the hell was going on. I don't think I call her name at all. And basically, she said, don't tell me Mr. Jangles is out. And the man was like, uh, well, pretty much. And we see how exactly that happened. So one of the workers there, black man. He goes to the cell that Mr. Jangles was at, and apparently Mr. Jangles hung himself, so we thought. And so the black dude, he thought it was uh, funny or something to go and say, you know, you know, be better off without you, whatever he told. He kind of like pushed his body a little bit. And so Mr. Jangles, he was like, you know, hanging from this damn sheet, and his eyes open. I was like, oh, that man is dead. And so he choked the hell out of him, choked him so damn bad, his eyes start bleeding bloody tears. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't no water, wasn't no salt water, nothing. Just straight up bloody ass tears. Just bloody river running down this man's face. And so that man is dead like a motherfucker. And so he puts his feet on the chair so he can untie his neck and all that. You know, and he's looking at the man. He takes his jingling keys. Mind you, that's how his name is, Mr. Jingles. He got a thing for jingling, jingling ass keys. Them irritating ass keys. Them noisy ass keys. Them annoying ass keys. And uh, he puts them on and he takes the man's glasses or something. Well, his glasses, I don't know. He puts the shit on. And I'm telling y'all right now, when I saw him before he put them glasses on, because his eye, one of his eyes, the side of his head looked bigger than the other. I'm like, this dude looked like a mixture of Victor Crowley from that movie Hatchet with Danielle Harris, one of my favorite actresses, and motherfucking ass Jason with Michael Myers suit on. Tell me I'm wrong. And then when Mr. Patient, Mr. Patient, when uh Mr. Jangles, he get up out of his room, he hits that little button or whatever, and he lets all the other crazy patients out. So that's that's exactly how all that happened. All of them just escaped out of nowhere, out of the damn asylum. I'm surprised they didn't show the Joker, but that's for another story. And so the lady or whatever, the lady detective, whatever she is, <clears throat> whatever role she gonna play, excuse me, in this uh show here, she finds a piece of little newspaper on the side of his bed. You know, you can see it sticking out. And so it, it opens up and it talks about, um, you know, the main title about uh, Camp Redwood reopening. And that's, so we already know that's where he going. That's how he escaped. That's why he escaped. So we are back at the gas station with your boy Ed. He's up, he's under the damn car, you know, doing his little work and all that. And so Ed, he hears a noise at first. And he's like, what the hell is that? And all of a sudden you see this damn white cat run, run across him. And clearly that was his cat. I think his name, her name was Ella Bella, something like that. Bella Thorne, Bella Bob, Bella from Twilight. I don't know. Um, but that's not the only thing that's arrived at his little auto shop, right? So all of a sudden, Mr. Jangles, he gets to the gas station, you know, and Ed, he gets back under the car and he sees, um, he's, well, Ed, he sees Mr. Jangles' shadows. 
And uh, he was like, he was telling Mr. Jingles, well, he didn't know who that was at first. He was like, hey, you know, you can't just come up in here. If you're looking for gas, you can wait outside. Sir, he's not looking for glass. He's looking for gas. He's looking for blood, blood, and probably an ear. And so Mr. Jangles, he takes the little holders or whatever you call them. You know, when you fix the car, you hold the shit up so you can do what you got to do if you're, you know, auto repairman, whatever they call them. And he was like, hey, hey, you know, he was trying to slide up out of there and it was too late. And the car slammed right into the middle of his body and everything. And it was a hot ass mess, just blood just bubbling right out of his mouth. And uh, Mr. Jangles looks right in his face and he was like, what in the hell? And all of a sudden, I think he took Ed's keys and stepped on his face like he was a damn bug. I was like, well, he's dead. And we're back at the cabin with the crew. They just chilling, watching TV. You know what I'm saying? And uh, once again, Chet, he's in his feelings about the Olympics or whatever. I don't know if it was because it was some black people running or if he wasn't in the Olympics. I don't know. I don't know. And uh, Brooke went on to say about how there was more men than women. And, you know, Chet, he got an attitude. Like, you know, what the hell would you know about it or something like that? He got a whole attitude with her. Like, what the hell wrong with you? And so he gets mad, and he throws a can at Ray, and it cuts his hair, like, right here. And so he got to go find some bandages because Rita was like, look, I'm off duty. I'm off work. I'm not a nurse no more right now. So he goes out to go find some bandages, and Brooke, she goes to, you know, follow him along. And with that being said, what happened next? What happened next? So we finally see Mr. Jingle Jangles. He finally arrives at Camp Redwood, and basically, you know, somebody's about to get body, right? And so Ray, he washing off his hand and shit in the little sink. And Brooke, she, you know, she surely shows up after that. And, uh, you know, she helping him wrap his hand. It looked like they was finna kiss for some for a minute or something. You know, how close they start looking at each other, giving each other googly eyes or something like that. And, uh, you know, she like, basically, just put some pressure on your hand. I'm finna go find some bandages and some iodine, right? So she goes into the cabin. It's dark as hell. She got her little flashlight. And uh, she looks in one cabinet. Not, nothing's there. She goes in another room to look in the other medicine cabinet. And all of a sudden, the door closes, and there's the damn hiker dude. He hanging on the damn back of the door, dead as hell. And then she looks out, it's like thunder and lightning, and there's Mr. Jingle Jangles. And so she got to run like hell up out of there. So she's running. She's running. She's running for Mr. Jingle Jangles, and she falls in the mud. You know, the typical uh, girl falls out of nowhere, you know, in a horror movie type of thing. And so she gets up and runs some more. And then we show a quick scene back at the cabin. But then we show we go back to Brooke. Well, oh, yeah, they was watching the Olympics. They was, like, kind of comparing the scene. You know, the guy running in the Olympics. Uh, Brooke actually running in this horrible situation, right? And she's running again. She's running in the grass. And she falls the fuck again. And she trips and tumbles over in all this mud once again. And she finally runs fast enough to make it back to the cabin just in time because I guess Ray, he just left her ass alone. That's fucked up. So she gets back to the cabin. She's covered in mud. They were like, yo, what the hell wrong with you? And she was like, Mr. Jingles, that's what's wrong. He is out there. He's alive. He almost killed me. And they was like, they go outside. Nobody's there. And she was like, are you sure? Well, Ray was like, are you sure it's Mr. Jingles? She said, yes. His ass after me. The hiker dude is dead. He was hanging on the door. I know what I saw. And so all of the crew, they go back to the, uh, the other cabin where she saw the hiker dude hanging up on the door and shit, dead as a motherfucker. And uh, Rita, she goes behind the door and she sees nothing. She was like, girl, you tripping? And she was like, no, he was there. I know, I know what I saw. And, you know, of course they do that whole scene where they have her looking crazy and everything. They're asking her, like, did you smoke something? Or did you contact her or something? She was like, no, I ain't high at all. I know what I saw. Mr. Jingles is out there somewhere right about now. And all of a sudden, they walk to the hallway where Brooke does. And uh, it's a shadow and all that with the raincoat. And it's just Margaret. So she had a freak out. She was like, look, what's going on here? Everybody got to get back to the cabin. Let's go home. And then, so Margaret goes on to say, because she sees Brooke covered in all this mud. She's like, what the hell happened to you? Go clean yourself up. Cleanliness is next to God. And as I told you, she wanted them holier than thou. Super religious people. So Brooke is laying in her bed. She chilling. She about to go to bed. And she hears this damn telephone. <coughs> she hears this telephone ringing. And, you know, obviously she's curious enough to go and answer it. And she was like letting Montana know, like, you know, I thought they said the phone was down. You know what I'm saying? So who the hell could be calling? Montana wasn't really trying to hear all that. She was like, I'm going to go back to bed. So, of course, Brooke, she goes outside again, risking it all to go see who's on this phone. So she goes to pick up the telephone. She's like, yo, hello, who this? Hello. And... It's just somebody breathing, and all of a sudden I hear some jangle lang of keys, and she was like, who the hell is this? What's going on here? This is on some screen type of shit. What's your favorite scary movie type of shit? So 
Nobody says nothing. All of a sudden, they pin the camera to the damn Satanist dude that was uh that broke into her house, robbing her for her jewelry, and the episode ends. Y'all, I must say again, I honestly am excited for this season. This shit was cra- Hello, focus, hello. This, this shit was crazy for a first episode. Now, if y'all ain't satisfied with this, good night. Okay, this is the ninth season of American Horror Story. American Horror Story has been on for nine seasons. Can y'all believe next year we're going to get season 10? They got to go all out. They might as well have every single person that played a character on American Horror Story. They got to put them all in one, all in one season and like do the damn thing. I better see Sarah Paulson. I better see Evan Peters. I better see the rest of all y'all motherfuckers. Like this was one hell of a episode. I was going to say hell of a season. We only in, we only in the beginning for the season. But I'm excited. This was only episode one. So much happened. But like I really got nothing but mixtures of Friday the 13th vibes. I still know what you did last summer. Or oh, I know what you did last summer. Um, what else did I say? Hell, even the Friday the 13th game with the whole cabin thing and, you know, all the campers and shit having to run and all of that and getting murked in the cabin beds and all of that. And then a little bit of Halloween with the music and stuff. Um, I was going to say something else too, but I can't think of it, but... Um, I really enjoyed this episode, and I can't wait for episode two. I can't wait for the rest of the season to see how this gonna plays out. Um, but with that being said, if you guys enjoyed my review, if you made it to the end of this video, please hit the like button, comment below. What's one of your favorite, once again, what's one of your favorite, uh, seasons in American Horror Story? Let me know. Me personally, once again, mine was definitely Coven. Uh, the next one for me, if I had to choose, um... I'm going to go with Hotel. I enjoyed that one, too. And Roanoke. And Apocalypse. Because when the witches came back, I was like, man, listen. But y'all let me know. And uh, what was one of your favorite moments from tonight's, well, last night's episode? And uh, I'll see you guys in for episode two. Okay? So with that being said, once again, hit that subscribe button. Okay? Follow me on my Instagram. And uh, hit that notification bell. And uh, since this is primarily a reaction channel, okay, send me some reaction requests. Go ahead and do that. And once again, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button. Share this with your friends. Anybody that watches American Horror Story. And I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? Thank you all for watching. Taylor Rain, I'm after this day.